first one is a drop title. Feels quite natural these days to walk immobile fingers eagled, clutching our mobile devices, thick thumbs pressed on the artery of send, receive. We forget the grace of arms gliding through air, forget the trusting animal trying to lick our palms. Heads down, we text and search, can tell you how many Samaritans are left. We can train our pets to beg, cannot manufacture hope in their eyes. My grandmother would have carried grandfather if her back were better. She did everything else for him. After her death, the police kept hauling him lost and bewildered back to our house. He crawled out again and again to look for her. My mother-in-law tended to her starched husband. She died still praying he would go first. But for nosy neighbors, he would have starved facing food-filled cupboards. I sit in front of two laden plates on the kitchen table. My husband is very late. His key turns in the door. He's pleased I haven't eaten. And this is Crap Bam. After he lifted my veil, the territory given me was orgasms like M16s, bowling, crushed pretzel meatloaf. On Mahjong night, between one crack, two bam, talk of who had the biggest bedroom set, best vacations, best chance to get pregnant. I couldn't say I'd been sneaking around with my hippie sister eating rice that wasn't white, riding my Brooklyn train to Washington Square anti-war protests. I couldn't say I stopped looking up at him on our anniversary tryst after he kept his eyes closed during Ella Fitzgerald at the Rainbow Room, told me he couldn't get past her skin. I couldn't say I stopped looking at him after he marched me to the clinic, told me to say, we're not ready. I was ready to toss my veil, scorch earth, footsteps barely on new ground. I fell off the edge. <laughs> and this one has a drop title. Plain Jane, they called her. I don't need any of you, she'd say. Today, she belongs to a choir. Sunday morning, her white robe glistens. Underneath, Jesus soothes the fresh welts darkly rainbowed. He forgiveth her sin of plainness, her sins of Saturday night. Pierced, collared, bound, she awaits center stage, whips ascend, descend, her breasts sway from sting after sting, her back and arms receive the offerings, thighs accept the love, melt with every stroke. Forgive me, Jesus, she intones, on Sunday I'm yours, on Saturdays I'm the anointed. <laughs> time. Our mother never cooked like our grandmother did, her mother Katie, with ingredients from scratch, took an hour to prepare, a whole morning to get done, filling the apartment with warmth. Our mother reduced food to its driest, flattest state, broiled what should have been babied on top of the stove or tenderly minded inside. Our mother would throw under the broiler flesh or fish, 
Never look until it just curled into the same brown, no matter what it started out as, until it toughened up like a wrestler, punching our teeth and gums as we tried to chew. No sauce on top, no salt, no spices. We couldn't talk much for all the effort needed to eat the halibut or dry white chicken. We couldn't complain, couldn't ask for things we weren't getting, like allowance or summer camp. We couldn't plead with her to stop hitting us, stop screaming. All we could chew was chew and chew, get through supper time. After death, another October passes. Again, no visit to mother's grave next year. In life, she was a shoreline hit by disaster after disaster, denuded of past, of future. I couldn't look beyond her eyes, couldn't read her. She was all kisses, all fists. Fear was the boulder in the doorway. Fear was my surrogate mother. Yet I wept at her funeral, wept on the road, emptied of mother. When we walked the same road, I twisted myself almost to snapping to avoid her footprints, make my own marks. Now I understand her nicotine fingers, coffee and sugar blasts and blues. I understand her porcelain, dark-haired beauty, cracked to helpless chrome, no potions to soften her. As I piece together what is happening to me, what has happened to me, what I have changed and am changing, I save pieces to fill her in. I would refuse my mother's hand when we walked. Now I welcome her into me to fill in my shoreline make me whole. Wow. And this is Gone Mad. He takes my hand, leads me to the promenade, my New York City skyline opposite his New Jersey. The towers are two gems missing from a fiery necklace Headstone stolen, remains twisted like Rodin gone mad. I fall into his arms. I'm right here, he says. I believe you, I tell him. Then float on his skin like an electric storm, shore of breast lapping against harbor of chest, twin hearts roaring like jets about to slam into something. Drop title. A kid and a dog. You often see that in pictures. Growing up, I only knew black dogs in Brooklyn traveling in packs, thrashing at my pant legs, drooling pus and foam. As a teen, I had no choice but coexist with a Doberman who humped my leg on the sofa while my fiance moved to second base. My future in-laws howled with laughter when their pet walked on the kitchen table between plates piled with brisket. Years later, I dashed down a busy thoroughfare, came upon a German shepherd, dazed and bleeding. For an hour, I frantically flagged unyielding traffic. When my tears fell on him, I wished he'd rise up, transform, find his flock. He raised his head, looked deep into my eyes. I cradled him like I never could, the fetus ordered from my womb by a husband too young to marry. This is Foreigners. Paris, after five years of dreams we arrive. Framed by miles of trees, we stroll the Champs-Élysées through scenes rendered in paint and ink for centuries. 
I point out to you a door surrounded by layers of scallop molding. Like an onion, I say. A door is just a door, you say. In a sidewalk cafe, you enjoy laissez-faire in Ralph Lauren khakis, blow cigar smoke in my face through lunch. I am green as a Parisian garbage worker's jumpsuit. Standing on a, cor on a corner, we propose opposite routes. Conjuring up my guidebook French, I ask locals, pour the best direction over oh, the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> you step away, look at me as if I were a mime trying to do stand-up. We join the line to the tower, wait an hour to reach the first level, another two to the top. After we take in all four views, you give me a kiss, structured and pointy as the summit we've reached. <laughs> Drop title. At Ellis Island, they throw away my father's last name. He covers his Sephardic roots blends in with the Eastern European Jews. He settles family in a Brooklyn project. When father takes one whiff of cumin-laced lamb, he locks our windows, piles on his plate brisket and boiled potato. When he passes neighbors on the evening walk, he brushes past their komorstash, mutters under his breath, I'm fine, I'm fine. When his daughter asks where he was born, he points far across the ocean. She collects photos of faces like his, long and narrow, high cheekbones, sharp chin, dark eyes. In school, she slips easily into Meyamo. Senoritas in red beckon from grammar books. When she decides to teach Spanish, father yelled, you're throwing away your education. Now, he's lost the way to temple, can't find the next prayer page. Every day, she shows him photos of faces like his. He's forgotten who she is, forgotten his name. Every day he prays, Dio, por favor, please take me to mi padre. Finding Barbara. My first call to your new room, semi-private. It's Madeline. I had a friend, Madeline. It's me. No, it's not. They moved you from your Manhattan apartment to slow your descent, already past the bunny hill, careening down the intermediate slope. I exist outside your assisted oatmeal and camaraderie. Can you still recite Frost, sing Danny Boy? These days to understand one word of yours is like rescuing a shell fragment from a storm-blown beach. After our calls, I want to give up, but you and I don't know if we fail or succeed. As I lose you, I want to curl into a ball, roll to a corner by the TV. New friends and old push me onto the up escalator. In my queen's apartment, I take dozens of your old postcards together to keep them from slipping under the bookcase into the dust.